So we've done Catwoman and the Riddler and now it's time for Two-Face. As usual, these are my personal opinions. Write your own list in the comments. And let's get straight to it. Number 5. The Mask of Matthias Malone from Batman the Brave and the Bold. Finally, a Brave and the Bold episode on one of these lists. Ironically though, it happens to be the last episode. Many of you may not even know of this one, since as far as I know, it's never been aired in the US. The reason for this is because it features a rather raunchy sung and dance number performed by the Birds of Prey. Apparently, this was just too much for the American people, so they banned it. I do believe the episode is featured as bonus content on one of the DVD volumes though. Anyway, in the episode, Batman teams up with the Birds of Prey, Catwoman, Black Canary and the Huntress to take down Two-Face. Harvey recently stole a magical artifact from a Gotham museum, the Cloak of Nefertiti, which grants the wearer nine lives, and plans to auction it off to the highest bidder. Disguised as gangster Matthias Malone, Batman and his lovely lady friends breaks up the auction though. However, during the ensuing fight, Batman gets clobbered on the head. Apparently suffering from amnesia, Batman thinks that he actually is Matthias Malone. The caped crusader thus becomes a real criminal, and garbed in the cloak of Nefertiti takes over all of Harvey's rackets. Two-Face's only hope to regain his criminal empire rests on Batman stopping matches. But of course we know that isn't going to happen. Frustrated over Batman's absence, Harvey decides to take the matter into his own hands and dons a Batman costume of his own. Meanwhile, the birds of prey are naturally also trying to put a stop to Matches' madness and save their confused ally. This was the only episode of Brave and the Bold that featured Two-Face in a major role. And of course it had to get banned. That's just Harvey's luck I guess. He's always losing the coin toss. It's a great episode too, very fun and entertaining. Naturally seeing Harvey dressed up like Batman fighting the real Batman dressed up like Matthias Malone is a real treat. This episode also proves that Harvey doesn't always have to be grim and dark. He can be lighthearted too, as long as you pull it off right. Number 4. Double Cross from Justice League Action in this episode, Two-Face has stolen money from the Penguin, and Oswald thus hires Deadshot to take him out and get the money back. Meanwhile, Batman has taken Two-Face into protective custody and plans to use Plastic Man disguised as Two-Face as a decoy to lure Deadshot out. While Batman and Plastic Man are busy with this, Firestorm is put on guard duty, staying with a tied-up Two-Face in a shabby hotel room. Naturally, that doesn't end so well. Yeah, a pretty simple episode. There's not really much to say about it. What I like so much about it is the portrayal of Two-Face. In the Brave and the Bull episode, he was given a fairly light-hearted treatment. But here, he's straight up comedic. His split personality, usually pretty disturbing and dark, is played up for laughs. His two personalities, Harvey Dent and Two-Face, exist at the same time. They're also very distinct from one another and constantly argue with each other. Here, Two-Face basically is two people literally sharing the same body. Two very different people. And with a constant like that, hilarity naturally ensue. This is by far the funniest Two-Face I have ever seen. Move over, Clown Prince, there's a new king of comedy in town. Despite the fact so many characters appear in this episode, he, or they I guess, completely steal the show. This is of course not the first time they tried to portray Harvey as a comedic character. We did get that in Batman Forever too. That version completely failed though as it relied on bad puns and goofy theatrics. Why in the name of God they didn't play up his split persona instead, I'll never know. This Despite often being very grim and brooding, Harvey is actually ripe for comedic interpretations too, and here it's done to perfection. Number 3. Judgment Day from the New Batman Adventures a new mysterious vigilante called the Judge is in town and is cleaning up the city's underbelly using very brutal methods. In his crusade against crime, the Judge nabs the Penguin, Killer Croc and the Riddler. Next up on the list is Two-Face. Batman naturally disapproves of the Judge's cruel tactics and sets out to stop him. In order to save his old friend Harvey Dent from the crazed vigilante's grasp, Batman gets to him first. But of course, we eventually learn that the Judge and Two-Face are one and the same. All this time, it was Two-Face himself who was punishing the wicked without even knowing it himself. It appears that Harvey Dent has suffered another mental breakdown, and his disturbed mind has created a third persona, the Judge, a blend of Harvey's own sense of justice and Two-Face's violent tendencies. Neither Harvey nor Two-Face are aware of this though, nor is the Judge aware that he is one of the very criminals he so hates. 
So yeah, there's a real mind bender for you. This episode is definitely one of the most fascinating examinations of Harvey Dent's fragmented mind. A lot of people don't know this, but Judgment Day is actually based on a comic published in Shadow of the Bats in 1997. In that one, Two-Face's third crime-fighting persona is called Janus, the Two-Face god from Roman mythology. I think this episode is actually far superior though. It simply handles the subject matter better and Harvey is portrayed in a more compelling way. The judge is also more fitting than Janus. So yeah, chuck this one up as an adaptation that improved upon the source material. It's also another great example of the character split persona gimmick being put to good use. And the best stories with Harvey are usually the ones that do that. Number 2, Second Chance from Batman the Animated Series. Second Chance is the second greatest Two-Face episode. I think Two-Face himself would be proud. Anyway, in this one, Harvey Dent has, believe it or not, actually been improving while locked up in Arkham. I guess there's a first for everything. The final part to completely restore his sanity though will be plastic surgery. Once and for all, remove the Two-Face persona entirely, both mentally and physically. However, just as the operation is about to begin, a gang of crooks bursts onto the scene and takes off with a sedated Harvey. It's up to Batman to figure out who kidnapped Harvey and why, and then bring back his old friend. Just like the previous entry, this one has a big twist too, and it's basically the same twist. The culprit is Two-Face himself. The evil side of Harvey had a kidnapping of himself arranged, knowing that his good side was planning to get rid of him. Obviously Two-Face doesn't want that. If anyone's going anywhere, it's that two-bit goody good. Second Chance is, in my opinion, a perfect Two-Face episode, and one that's oddly enough often ignored. You don't really see that many talk about this one. I'm not sure why it's fallen into relative obscurity compared to some of the show's other episodes. In Second Chance, we truly get to see just how disturbed Harvey Dent really is. His personalities are so separate that one arranges a kidnapping of the other without him knowing it. This guy is really messed up. Of course, unlike the Justice League action episode, Harvey's mental problems are played straight here. This Two-Face is not funny in any way. He's sad, tragic and disturbing. Poor Harvey. At least Bruce Wayne still cares. And that's another plus for this episode, the friendship between Harvey and Bruce. It's very touching actually. No matter how deep Harvey falls into madness, Bruce will never give up on him. And again, a great usage of Two-Face's split personality. And now for the greatest Two-Face episode of them all. And you all know which one it is. Number 1, Two-Face, Part 1 and 2, from Batman the Animated Series. Of course, what else could it be? And who in your right mind would disagree with me? I've reviewed this two-parter in the past and I've also talked about it on a million other occasions. We all know what it is. It's the be-all, end-all when it comes to the character of Harvey Dent. His origin story on Batman the Animated Series. The tragic story of how District Attorney Harvey Dent, champion of justice and best friend of Bruce Wayne struggles with mental issues and the pressures of his job, until he finally breaks and becomes the vengeful supervillain Two-Face. This two-parter is often hailed as one of the crowning achievements of the animated series, right alongside Heart of Ice and the creation of Harley Quinn. And for good reason. It's not only the greatest Two-Face cartoon episode, but really one of the greatest pieces of animation ever made. Few kids cartoons, including the rest of Taz, has gone so deep into the psyche of such a deranged person like Harvey. It amazes me that this was even made for kids. As I've said many times before, there are plenty similarities between these episodes and Eye of the Beholder, Two-Face's 1990 comic origin. For me, it's a coin toss over which of the two is the greatest Two-Face story ever made. They both have pros and cons over one another. This one has a friendship between Bruce and Harvey, which the comic completely lacks. And it also has a tragic love story between Harvey and Grace. Gilda is barely a character in the comic. Those are the points where the cartoon is superior. As for the parts where it's inferior, it still does them really damn good. Any complaints I have are just nitpicks. Alongside Eye of the Beholder, this is the definitive Two-Face story. And it is also interesting to note that this was the character's very first animated appearance. They got it right, right from the start. Forget the Dark Knight, and of course forget Batman Forever. This is where you go. If a non-comics reader wants some Two-Face, you better send them to Two-Face Part 1 and 2. Otherwise, you'll do the character a great injustice. And here you have it, my top 5 Two-Face cartoon episodes. Tell me yours in the comments. For now, we are now done with this series. I wanted to do Riddler and Harvey, so I did them. I don't really feel a great desire to do any of the rest. Of course, that doesn't mean I never will. I'm not making any promises, but it is possible that at some point, I'll return to this series. In the meantime, remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.